<laughs> Welcome to the Chrissy Sam and Brownie podcast in Pangy's chair, the great Pete. Hill. Yes, a very special guest, my project colleague, yeah, that's Peter right. Hellier. <laughs> uh, great to have you as usual. Always great to be here. Thank you so much for agreeing to uh, to do it. It was an instant yes. <laughs> I, th- I thought you were, uh, you were preparing for... Uh, Carlton Collingwood on Sunday. Uh, yeah. And uh, because I know, because you hit me up for 11 tickets. Mm. Yeah. It's just a disgrace. Don't you know other people in town? <laughs> well, I actually was. I actually needed 15. I only asked for 11. So, I mean, <laughs> I actually scaled it back a bit. That's all right. That's all right. Well, keep listening if you want to find out, find out if these jiggy squirrels are telling the truth or not. A woman has, uh, has killed her husband, which is sad news, mm. uh, but she probably shouldn't have written a book a few years earlier called How to Kill Your Husband. <laughs> yeah, give away. Not ideal. If you're um, going to Top Gun this weekend. Yeah. Yes. Everything you need to know and get you pumped up for the greatest movie ever made in history. Yes, mm. indeed. And we explore amazing shampoo names with Peter Hellier. Oh, the great Kevin Murphy. Do not miss this rant. And, and how about some of those tidbits we heard? They were good today. Oh. Is it a tidbit or a titbit? A tidbit. It's both. I'm going with tit. Don't be afraid oh. to say no, tit. I want to be real juvenile and yeah. go tit. Good on you, John. Bit. Tits are the best thing of life. They are. Like, Enjoy. Google titbit and... Tell me what you said. <laughs> <laughs> Chrissy, Sam and Brownie, the podcast. Good morning, Melbourne. It's a rainy old morning out there, but it's Friday, so good news, bad news, huh? Hi. How are you, Swanee? I'm good. How are you? Good, good, Dino. How, How are you, brother? brother? Went to Top Gun last night. Full recap, a full AMA at 7.20. Can you give AMA or ask me anything? Can you give me... A star rating, just as a little amuse bouche. What's the max stars five, in your head? Five. Patch gave it four and a half. I'm giving it five stars. Wow. Oh, Choke on that. We've got to see this film. We started preparations last night. Jack, uh, little Jackie boy's nine, and Macy's seven years old. Yes. So, kids, we're going to Top Gun. Yeah. We've got to prepare, though. So, we're going to watch the, the original. And I've heard it's fine for kids. It's not too sexy, well, not too full violent. I'll recap later because Pete will have. Uh, his thoughts on it as well. I think Helly has seen it. Who's filling in today? And he interviewed Tom Cruise. Oh, boy. So we will get the scoop from Peter Hellier, who'll be in at seven. I love it, though. Kelly McGillis and... Uh, Kelly McGillis or McGillis? McGillis, yeah, McGillis, yeah. yeah. And, uh, yeah, Maverick, when they get it on a couple of times. Yeah, it's hot. Kids, hands over the eyes. Yes. <laughs> Don't look, Macy. Yes. <laughs> Go, Dad, Dad, is it finished yet? No. And then you look and you just a little peeps through the fingers. Nothing more exciting. Hey, how thrilling. Yeah. How thrilling. Chrissy, Sam and Brownie. Nothing beats a cosy winter getaway. Oh, or escaping to a tropical paradise. Whatif.com helps you make up for getaways you've missed. Plan and book everything travel all in one place. Jump online or the What If app. What If? It's Aussie for travel. Valet, Ray Liotta. Yes. Or Liotta. Uh, one of the great US actors, Swanee, died Absolutely. in his sleep overnight, age of 67. 67 years young. He was actually filming, isn't it, in the Dominican Republic, Swanee? He was so unique mm. and so Ray Liotta. Scary. Yeah, There's scary. only one Ray Liotta. One Ray Liotta. He was actually, you know, he was uh, dropped off in an orphanage when he was a little baby. I did not know that. Absolutely. He's dropped off in an orphanage and then um, he was adopted out wow. at the age of six months um, in Newark because he was in the... Uh, he was in the, uh, what's it was called? The Sons of, not the Sons of Newark, the, uh, what was the latest one, which was like the Goodfella prequel. Oh, the uh, Sopranos, Many yeah, Saints of Newark. The Many Saints, the Many Saints of Newark, not uh, the Sons of Newark. Um, so, but he actually grew up in Newark, which is uh, just in New Jersey there, Swanee. Yeah, just out of New we, York uh, City. Did we fly out of Newark Airport? I think we did, yes. I think we yeah. did when, yeah. we going, when we were over there to do the marathon. Yeah. Just coming back. So, But one of the absolute greats, what about some of his uh, some of his hits? Remember oh. back in the day, Goodfellas, obviously, which I'll get to at the end. He was also in Field of Dreams. Oh yes. Oh, he was great in that. He was good, wasn't he? If you haven't seen Field of Dreams, see it. Amazing. It, it, it's one of the best. Have you seen it, Dino? Abs Costner. Come on. Oh. Can you uh, can you remember what his character's name was in Field of Dreams? He played Shoeless a ghost. Shoeless Joe. Jo- Shoeless yes. Joe Jackson. Yes. Well done, Chris. Swatty. Swatty. It was oh, pretty good, wasn't it? I'm he? going home now. I'm done. See you, mate. Yeah. 1989 <laughs> Field of Dreams, Swanee, into 1990 Goodfellas. Yes. Jeez, that was a big... Uh, they, he went back-to-back with those two. Obviously, Costner was the star of that, but Goodfellas was unbelievable. Copland in 97. Mm. What about... Can you remember Hannibal? Remember the, the next Hannibal film? I didn't see it. Well, uh, when uh, Anthony Hopkins uh, gets him and then uh, sits him down, drugs him up, 
and then cuts the top of his skull off oh. while he's alive. <laughs> cuts some of his brain out and Horse cooks play. it up in a fry pan while he's talking into him. Horseplay. It is, un- it is one of the most graphic scenes you'll ever see in movie history. What sort of person writes that is what I want to know. Yeah. Amazing. Unlawful Entry starring Kurt Russell. Yes, that was great. Uh, <laughs> Blow. Which one? Blow. Blow. Of course. Remember Blow with Johnny Depp? Yeah, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he was cool. Now, John Q. Uh, he's in several others. He's in a few series lately. But the one we want to go back to is Goodfellas. When he played uh, Henry Hill, of course, the famous gangster movie, iconic movie, Swanee. Yes. And just his scene. I, I went through went through the scenes, but the end, I think, just sums up his character, Henry Hill. See, the hardest thing for me was leaving the life. Great I still love the life. And we were treated like movie stars with muscle. We had it all just for the asking. Our wives, mothers, kids, everybody rode along. Yeah. I had paper bags filled with jewelry stashed in the kitchen. I had a sugar bowl full of Coke next to the bed. Didn't mean anything. When I was broke, I would go out and rob some more. We ran everything. We paid off cops. We paid off lawyers. We paid off judges. Everybody had their hands out. Everything was for the taking. And now it's all over. How good. Sounds like a weekend at Dino's. It does. What? what? Good on you. Valet. Valet. This is the Chrissy Salmon Brownie Podcast. It's late. It's time for the Home Viewer Quiz. <laughs> All right, let's meet our contestants. Josh and Geelong. Chrissy's playing for you. Say hello to Chrissy Josh. How you going, Chrissy? Hey, Josh. How's Mirable Street today? Oh, look, it's beautiful as per. Always as per. You're beautiful, Josh. You're beautiful. Josh, you love you. Jado, I'm playing for you. Hey, good morning. How are you? Jade, I need a little bit more up-tempo from you. Come on, Jade. <laughs> what do you want me to say? Woo! Yes, yes. that's it. That's, that's it. That's where I win your prize. What are we doing, Dana? An air fryer. Your life is awful unless you have an air fryer. It's actually true. Yes. Air fryers are the best. They fry things and it's not as bad for you as a normal fryer. Air fryers. I suppose that's true, but also it's the convenience and the speed mm. that I like. Good luck to all involved. Just by getting on the radio 10K a day in May. Anthony Albanese is the new Prime Minister. Juggernaut. 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 Penny Wong. S- Australia. Uh, it was Juggernaut and <laughs> oh, no. Shit, sorry. And full question is uh, what number Prime Minister is he? He's wife? the 31st. Well done. Well done. Well done. Thank you. Peanut butter re- originated from which country? Oh, jeez. Chris Chris I'm going to say Indonesia. Uh, mm. Stuffed it. It's Canada. Juggernaut. Canada. Oh, You've got to let me. <laughs> You've got to let me say. I'm going to say Canada. Oh. You were not going to say Canada. Oh, I was going to say Mozambique. He's got me on a technicality because I gave it to him and it's my fault. Let's go. I can't believe he got You that. don't rush me. I'm the host. Come on. Yeah. What is the biggest continent in... Juggernaut. 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 Biggest continent in the world is Asia. Correct, John. Yes. Come on. One apiece because the first one didn't count. Uh, what came first, YouTube or Facebook? Chrissy Swan. That would be YouTube. Uh, incorrect. Juggernaut. That would be Facebook. Oh, you can't do that, <laughs> surely. Yeah, can you, Jack? Yeah, well, Jack's yes, giving that can. to you. That's dodge. So dodgy. What do you reckon, Jade? Jadie? Yeah, good. Yep. Come good. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. What is the periodic symbol for magnesium? Chrissy Swan. It's MG. And she's back, well, gang, man. to a piece. Which major international film festival is currently underway? Chrissy Swan. The Great Khan Film Festival. One off the wind, John. Get She's a wriggle on. Trouble, Did Jade. you see that woman losing her mind on the red car? Oh, Google it, Jack- Jackie. You will love it. <sighs> she looks like Helena Bonham Carter <laughs> after a bender. <laughs> Former treasurer Josh Frydenberg. Juggernaut. Oh. She's lost his seat as the seat of Key Young. No, it's a uh, Monique Ryan. <laughs> uh, Give me well, the full question, please. To who? To Monique who? Ryan. Dr. Monique Ryan. It's Bob Frydenberg. Oh, that yeah. means Swanee is the winner. Josh from Geelong, you can reheat your pancakes that you bought from Pancake Parlour Moorable Street in your new air fryer. Ah, you little beauty. Yes. Jade, we'll send you to Jurassic Park Dominion. That's still pretty cool, huh? 
Yeah, that's actually a really good. Thank you. Good on oh. you, Jade. You have a beautiful day. I just wasn't feeling the Thank energy you. from Jade. Uh, that's no. why I didn't perform. You did it. You did it to yourself, Jade. <laughs> <laughs> Ever wondered what happens in the studio? Check out Chrissy Sam and Brownie on Instagram. Good morning, Melbourne. Chrissy Sam and Brownie on Nova One Hundred. Book a holiday. Uh, what if it? It's Aussie for Trump. Most kids are sick mm. at the moment. How many weeks off school have your kids had, Jonathan? Three weeks today. Whoa. Three weeks. Whoa. It's unbelievable. Liv. Liv went back to school and then um, she lasted one day and got crook. Or two days, got crook again. So I don't know what's going on. So I'll, I'll tell you what she did. She went to footy training 20 and she's fallen in a hole again, which can it. happen. Overdid it. And the other two have been home for the last fortnight. And I have noticed that. That is so long, And my it? wife will probably be away for the next three weeks because she'll be going to a... Uh, a facility. A, a facility. Oh, yes. A treatment facility oh. yeah. for mental health. Mm. Which uh, is and a, n- not a word of a lie. Not a, a word of a lie. No. Like, she's teetering on the brink to poor Dale. My kids have been at home on and off and, you know, you get a text message comes through, someone's at home. Mm. Yesterday, Peg was at home, my daughter, mm. and you sort of, I mean, look, I'm not proud of it, but you sort of hear that they're home and it's a bit of, it's an inconvenience <laughs> because you're like, oh, I had I had plans or I was going to go to the market and get this thing and you mm, can't do any of that. that. No. You can't do any of that. So I thought, well, I could either come home and rage around and be angry or we can turn this frown upside down and turn it into an opportunity because Peg, this was her second or third day sick. So she's not mm. as sick. The first day, she was basically in and out of consciousness. It's really serious, guys. So try and... Get your flu vax or avoid well, this, this test flu. Well, how's to influenza A? Yeah, so if you can issue. possibly avoid it, it's mm. a good idea because mm. um, it does lay you low. But yesterday um, I got home straight after work. Thank you for, for getting me out so early, everybody. And uh, Peg was just laying on the bed. I'm like, how are you feeling? She goes, I think I'm feeling a bit better. And she wasn't having any symptoms or coughing or anything. She just seemed tired. And she hasn't eaten for two days, mm. which is, you know, unheard of in my house. And I said to her, are you hungry? And she goes, yeah, I'm hungry for the first time all week, really. And I said, what would your dream meal be? And she goes, a carbonara from Pacino. So I thought I could be all like my mum was in the mm. 70s and 80s and 90s. And the Italians are back in Pacino, aren't they? They are. The gun they, cooks. Uh-huh. They go, I mean, my mum was like, if you're too sick for school, this is going to be, you know, your, your day has to be hell. Your day has to be hell. Suffer, bitch. Are they the rules that your mum implied, like, p- placed as well? You weren't allowed to call your friends or Od- have any fun? Oddly, I was given lemonade and icy poles. That was seemed yeah. to be the tonic. I used to have that. Yeah, yeah I bought it. Mm. I did buy pegs and frosty fruits. Right. Um, anyway, I am not that mother. I'm not that mother. And I think if you're, if you're hungry and you're able to leave the house, then we can. Short trips. So we went out for lunch yesterday, me and my nine-year-old daughter, and it was heaven. Right. And it just turned the frown upside down Hagrid's vis-a-vis a, one, a sick day. Hagrid's one-on-one time with a kid. So good. She sat down at the table and sanitised her hands immediately. Yeah. You don't have to tell them now. You don't have to tell them. And uh, she inhaled that pasta. It was so good. And then she said, I'm feeling a bit tired. Let's go home. And I did. And then she sat with me and we sorted out all my bathroom cupboards. That sounds like hell. <laughs> it's child labour. That's hell. No, right there. Pure it was hell. great. Hey. It was great. We ended up with you know masks on our face and yeah. old lipstick on, and <laughs> we just looked like we looked like something from Grey Gardens. The two of us. By you, the way, if you haven't seen Grey Gardens, you must. You girls can lo- uh, can load up an ensuite cupboard. Oh my gosh! But, uh, it's like a mecca store when yes. I walk into our joint. Yes, and I've got a little little corner for a bit a bit of shaving cream, yeah. a bit of deodorant and a yeah. shaver. I'm running out of space. Well, when we'd finished, uh, Peg said to me, "Tell me you're a Priceline ambassador without telling me you're a Priceline ambassador," <laughs> because I had I had everything organised, my eyeliners, yes. deodorants, everything in in containers. You know somebody thirteen twenty four ten. Are you a naughty sick day person? How do you deal with sick days? Are you are you trying to turn the frown upside down and having an experience, or are you like super rulesy, television off, laying in bed, cranky, cranky? Call us. We have prizes for you. Taryn, that was not the way I had sick days. I was punished <laughs> for being unwell. Taryn from Caulfield South, were you were you punished for being sick? Good morning, guys. Um, it was actually a little bit different. So in primary school, when we needed, like, a mental health day or something occasionally, mm. uh, mum would get us dressed, 
ready for school, say goodbye to Dad, hop in the car, and then once Dad left for work, we circle back home, get back into PJs, and stay home all day. Yes! Oh, that yes. That's <laughs> wicked! But why was your mum scared of your dad knowing? Because there was he hard. There was no way. Yeah, like, even if you've got, like, whatever, you're going to school. Yeah. There's no way out. Yeah, my dad yeah. was the same. Like, it was was your dad? Did your dad like have a have a military or police background or something? It's like, if, unless your it, leg is off, yeah. you're going to school. Yeah, it certainly felt like it. Yes. I've, had no, I've had no problems with uh, Jackie boy. This week we've had tradies working the whole mm. week, mm. and Jack he's getting a great education. Been out there for the last three or four days Absolutely. with the hammer. He's got the tool belt on, safety goggles. He's oh. been on the uh, he's been on the concrete cutter. Yeah, he's only nine years old. I know it's probably not great parenting, probably but I'm thinking Swanee. What an education the kid's getting. That's true. You've really turned that frown upside down. There you go. No worries uh, I love there. the theatre, Taryn, of what your mum did. That I is did unbelievable. Yes. Yeah, Outstanding. Yeah, yeah. It was commitment to the lie. And was, how, yeah. how many of you were in the back seat? Uh, just my sister and I. So. Oh, God, it's so and it exciting. wasn't very often. But, and, but you yeah, knew it was, it was happening. Special. You knew it was happening when you got in the car? Yes, oh, yeah. God. Lots of whispers around the house. Yes. Just get ready, get dressed, it's okay, just don't say anything. You get a $200 Gammy chicken and beer voucher, friend. Try yeah. Gammy chicken and beer's newest and tastiest dish yet, the Galby chicken psalm. Love Gammy's. Uh, I thought uh, oh, Taryn's mum was going to do the old trick that Lethal used to do. Uh, no, he'd turn up to training from time to time, Swanee, and he just wanted to free things up yeah. like a sick day. He goes, right, boys. Don't put the boots on. We're going 10 pin bowling. <laughs> How good's that? That's exactly what Taryn's mum did. Exactly. But, she, but he used to trick us, though. Great He'd get us there and we'd start preparing, like, thinking, shit, we've got a hard training session. Mm. You know, a couple of minutes later, me and Pikey are bowling spares <laughs> and strikes. That's adorable. Fantastic. Yeah, good. That's uh, gorgeous. Pat. You there, Pat? Hey, how you going, guys? Good, Patty. What do you reckon? Um, I, or maybe not nowadays, maybe when I was in maybe my late or early 20s, I used to, if I was home and it was nice, well, I'd have a couple of froppy. <laughs> yeah, good on you, Patty. Always Why, takes the edge of it. What, when you were sick or when your kids were sick? No, when I was sick. Yeah. Because that's what your immune system needs, some piss. <laughs> <laughs> if, yeah, if you're at home, you may as well kill it with a can of can of nice cold. Yeah. Well, I, I'd argue, Patty, that uh, that's a great... Um, it's a great medication because it does. It kills. Oh. The alcohol kills it, mate. Mm. Should be on the pharmaceutical shelves. I think. <laughs> Get in your price line, Swanee. Yeah, that's Slabs it. Slabs your car and Chrissy, Sam, and Brownie. The podcast. Good morning, Melbourne. We've got some good news. Actually, we've got two pieces of good news. One, yeah, is a uh, great news for the Great Barrier Reef. Everybody's concerned about the Great Barrier Reef because it's in absolute dire straits. We've just found out that Coles has committed ten million bucks. What? Oh, yeah, good one. To help protect the Great Barrier Reef, and thank God for that because I haven't seen it yet, and I want to see it. I've seen it, Swanee. It's magnificent. You know, it's home to over sixteen hundred species of fish. Wow! And six of the seven breeds of turtles in this country. Now, Pete Hallier, I'm just welcoming you to the microphone. Do you know what that sound is? Yeah, that's uh, that's the the local manager at Coles, actually. <laughs> that's Gavin. That's Gavin yeah, reading he, he, about the he, $10 million. He, he does impressions of sea turtles in the, uh, the Barrier Reef because he loves it so much. Uh, sea turtles mating. Yes. No, oh, Gavin, <laughs> it's his party trick. It's very impressive. It's very impressive. Welcome to the microphone, yes. Peter Hellier. Lovely to be here, guys. Also a very impressive unit. Uh, great to see you. We're bookending the week. Obviously, we do. I've been so thrilled and honoured to be doing the project with you every Monday. You've been killing it. And uh, Mondays are happy Mondays uh, with, with Chrissy on the project. And then uh, now, yeah, Nova on a Friday. Mm. So Just great. Away. What a way to finish the week. Yes. And he's so... all excited. He's up and about. Oh, there's Collingwood good... Carlton Sunday. Oh, there's some good news happening. Kenobi's out today. Oh. Boston are going to go to the East. Well, the, the championships uh, right. uh, tomorrow, it's hopefully. It's a great day to be Peter it's Hellier. It's a great day. Yes. This is the Chrissy Salmon Brownie Podcast. And it is Chrissy Salmon Brownie on Nova 100 in Pangy's chair. Our mate. And condolences to Sam Pang. He's pales between his legs. We've been texting a little bit recently because he's Miami Heat have been taken on the Boston Celtics. 
in the Eastern Conference final in the NBA. Mm. So basically, for those who don't follow it, uh, you have an Eastern Conference and a Western Conference, and uh, the Golden State Warriors are taking on the Dallas Mavericks. You're a Golden State Warriors. Right on. Uh, and so Golden State will probably win that. So it would probably be Golden State versus Boston, hopefully. Mm. Mm. Boston has to win grand, one more game. In the grand final. Serious. In the grand final. Let's call it the grand final. It's good to give us an update, because I got in trouble yesterday with Pang for asking him if Dwayne Wade still played for Miami. <laughs> <laughs> Does LeBron still play for Miami? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so... Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm fully into it. I, I, I love it. Although my dad's trying to get into it, and he, he's trying hard. But he, <laughs> and I texted him yesterday saying. What a great win by the Seas. And he goes, yeah, let's hope the Bostos can go the whole way. And he said, don't call them the Bostos, Dad. They've got now. no idea about American sport, the dads, do they? No, no, they don't. It is quite a foreign They're thing. They're late to, to the party. Actually. Yeah, they are late. But, uh, don't call them the Bostos, Dad. Not now. Not now. Don't start now. <laughs> not if you want to start that in the preseason, we can talk about it in the summer league. Maybe we can get that going. Yeah, of course. <laughs> So, uh, I, you know, I, I sometimes, uh, you know, I wear, a, I've got a few Celtics hats that I try to wear, and I, you know, if we're not going well, I'll change hats. Yeah. You know, I, I'm starting to get a little bit superstitious. And one superstition that's come up is that I've, I found this, this grab of a guy, uh, in a Boston bar. Um, it could be anywhere from the 80s, 90s, 2000s, and he's in a, doing a Vox Pops in a Boston bar before a, a championship. Might have been back in 2010. I don't know. Uh, but I love, his response. This is, this is the most Boston response. He was asked, who's going to win the series? And this is his response. Who's going to win it? The Celtics. Because there's no other reason why. The Celtics are the balls. <laughs> who's going to win? The Celtics. Why? Because there's no other reason why. The Celtics are the balls. <laughs> the balls. The balls. There's I no other reason why. Now I have, before each game, I need to post this because it's, it's, I didn't do it once and we lost. It, literally <laughs> yesterday's game, somebody said, you got to post the balls guy. Where's the balls guy? That's the reason. That's the reason. So that's the reason the Celtics right. have had that success. Absolutely. Well, superstitions are a big thing in sport. You would have had some superstitions. Absolutely. Well, I used to run out last. And I, I ran into a rat. Obviously, it's hard when you're captain, but uh, up until I was captain, I used to run out last. Got a little bit tricky though. In the 2001 Grand Final, Mel Michael, the former Collingwood yeah, player, yeah. a teammate of mine at Brisbane, he's a bit of a prankster. He thought it'd be a great idea as we're trying to come out. I was trying to come out last the, the tunnel at the MCG. 95,000 waiting for us. He goes. Uh, you go, big fella. I'm going to go last today. <laughs> Not today, mate. mate. We had an argument at the top of the race about who was going out last. <laughs> <laughs> don't do that, Mal. Not now. No, no not now. Not it's now. not Bostos. Oh, not don't now. call them Bostos, Mal. I went Mal. into a real panic. I said, mate, I'm not leaving. I'm not who, walking out. Who is stuffing around with Jonathan Brown on Grand Final oh, Day? No, and you guys no. nearly lost that game. If you yeah. had lost, you would have been... I would have knocked him out. Yeah. Would have killed him. Don't yeah. forget uh, your, your lucky cigarette before a game as well, oh, John. Yeah, Just before that. you spark no, you're, up. Con- you're confusing him with Max Gorn. <laughs> the, the, but everyone gets it. Lethal... Uh, Lee Matthews used to be like this. Really? Even Lee? Have, if you would have a good win, so we went on a winning streak before we won in, uh, in 2001 where he showed us this highlights package before a game, mm. you know, the previous weeks. And, yeah, it was, it was to pump up music. He might have been Eye of the Tiger or something in the background. And we won. So then, and then we kept winning. We won 15 in a row, won the premiership. So it was the video guy's nightmare. It used to take <laughs> him about 10 hours to put this compilation together every week because Lee insisted for the rest of his coaching career, the next seven years, that you had to put this compilation together before every game. That's that was his brilliant. superstition. Well, Steve Waugh said that he, was, he wasn't he was massive. I'm sure it was Steve Waugh who said he wasn't massive in the superstitions because at some point you would have to... It might have been Pat Rafter, actually. Anyway, at some point... Like, if you had a lucky tennis racket or a cricket yeah, bat yeah. and that broke, what does that do to you mentally? Like, exactly right. You're going to go, oh, hang on, I haven't got my lucky racket. Things are going to go to shit mm. now. So, yeah. so It becomes debilitating yeah. for some people. Absolutely. I Jeez. feel like we're standing around at a barbecue and, you know, you guys are nursing a beer and I'm there trying to engage in well, sports uh, conversation. Well, you know, get the a, crickets ready, Dino. Is, is a superstition in something. Yes. I... I Mine doesn't really compare, but I'm going for Go it for anyway. Come on. Anyway, guys, great sports stories. I also have a superstition. <laughs> I'm not a very competitive person, apart from with myself to have a good life. That's my that's my goal. And so when I see a corgi in the <clears> wild, <throat> <laughs> that is my sign <clears throat> that it's going to be a good day. <laughs> <laughs> 
Anyway, hey. I'll go and get you a new beer. I saw three corgis on the way in here. I have one more superstition. <laughs> I have one more superstition. Whenever I fill in on a, on a breakfast show, I free ball. I do. <laughs> I, do. I do. Want to see what happens in the studio? Check it out on Facebook. Follow Chrissy, Sam and Brownie. There it is. I can't wait to see. I haven't seen the first one, so I'm going to see the first one into the second one. Is that essential? Yes. Uh, well, it, uh, it's not essential, but you'll enjoy the second one, Maverick, uh, more. Okay. Lots of Easter eggs and also some l- l- tie-in factors, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, it gives great. context. Oh, we right. watched it last night with the kids. Mm-hmm. The original. Yeah, prep. Magnificent. Important prep. At the very least, just read the Wikipedia plot. I'm not joking. That's all you need to do if okay. you can't be bothered watching the full first one. Right. But, but if you only go see the second one, see the first one. Because yeah, yeah. the first one's, first one's Top Gun. Now, no real spoilers here, Pete. You've seen it, right, as well? Yeah, I've seen it. Oh, man, how freaking good is it? It's awesome. Like, I was watching it, and I just... I was only with me and my producer from the project, uh, Callum, and uh, and uh, she was sitting like five rows back, and the, the lights came up, and we just looked at each other, and we thought, my God, that was awesome. <laughs> yeah. Oh, really? I yeah. can't think of the anticipation, a bigger build-up or anticipation for a movie. Same. I can't think of one do you in think recent it's, times. Do you think it's properly good or that we've just been so starved of movies in the cinema experience? It's a bit It's a bit of the, the nostalgia hit it gives you. Mm. Like, the music that's played is oh not the first music God. you hear. Like, uh. They play this in Mavericks. Danger Zone plays within do. a minute. Like it, it, it's and it's got lots of connective tissue with the first one, and then but then it goes off into its own story. So they do a really good job of of going. You remember how much you love this movie? Yeah. Yeah. Now you know, and now we're going to bring you a look forward. Right. It, it, okay. it's, it's, like, it's like you go to a cheese store, and this movie is the top shelf of cheese. So you know you're buying cheese, but it's good cheese. It's French cheese. Yeah. You're in Paris buying cheese. Right. <laughs> yeah. Sure. I, I've got it. <laughs> Remind me, Meredith goes cheese. Le you fromage. For, you for a delivery. You're probably hoping. Is there another homoerotic uh, sports scene with a, a bunch of fellas just getting physical? <laughs> Without saying yes or no, I'm smiling. Okay. <laughs> One of the kids turned to me last night when playing with the boys on there playing beach volleyball. Mate. We're all sweaty. Jack, <laughs> Jack turned to me and goes, Dad, what's going on here? <laughs> <laughs> so good. Well, it's <laughs> great. Do you want to know the subtext or do you want to know? The... <laughs> <laughs> He's trying to make sense of it all. Now, I reckon go see it in IMAX. And as I told Brownie, if you're going to go to IMAX, go either uh, the equator or north of the equator. Yes. And by that, I mean the middle row. Yeah. If you're below that, that's a lot of work go for your next neck. Okay. And Goose's son, isn't it, too? Yeah, Miles, Miles Teller. Teller yeah. Miles Teller. I've got a question, though. Last night, it's a sad scene mm. when Goose gets killed. Mm. So they eject, they go into a flat spin. Spoiler alert. Sorry, sorry, Chrissy. <laughs> <laughs> they go into a flat spin. Yeah. After Iceman wouldn't get out of the way, yeah. they fly through his jet wash, go into a flat spin, they have to eject. The canopy goes up, Goose crashes into the canopy, and then he dies. Mm. I want to know, though, Yeah, I was questioning myself last night, did he die of blunt force trauma, trauma yeah. from crashing into the canopy, oh. or did he drown because Maverick took too long to swim over and save him? Oh, you're putting this on Maverick. Mm. I always... I always suspected it was because he, his head got rammed into the canopy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm not putting that on Maverick. Uh, I mean, it's a dangerous thing they're doing. They know that when you got a Top Gun, yeah. you need to be prepared for this. That's right. I, just, I was caught up in it. I just, it just consumed me the thought of that. I think, yeah. hang on, whose fault was that? Right. Something I never thought of when I watched it originally, and on my podcast, You Ain't Seen Nothing Yet, Tony Martin had never seen Top Gun, and we discussed this, and he raised the point, who are they fighting at the end? Like, they're in San Diego at Top Gun, and then all of a sudden, there's danger, like legitimate danger in disguise, and they got to actually go right. and, and, and uh, into a They're dog fighting fight. the Russians. Are they the Russians? Are, Are they, they the Russians? They're what? mid, oh, mid twenty eight. They should have had more warning that the Russians were coming. <laughs> were they the Canadians? I don't know. Well, it was weird actually because it was over the Indian Ocean. So why are they fight? Why are Americans fighting Russians over the Indian Ocean? Well, the Indian I mean, Ocean is just off the coast of WA. <laughs> I don't know how they've done this. Normally, if you're going to remake a movie, it's pure dog shit. Let's be completely honest. Absolutely. I don't know how. I walked out of the cinema on a cloud piece. Yes. I was the same. I, 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 I interviewed Tom Cruise, and I said the best way to describe my reaction was giddy. I was giddy coming out of the wow, cinema. It reminded gosh. me of the event cinema mm. that we 
you know, there were tent pole blockbusters mm. in the eighties and nineties, and now they're basically all Marvel. And I, yes, we were saying this yesterday. yesterday. Yeah, and I like, I love the Marvel of films. I'm, I'm here for them, but it's great to be in a cinema that's not connected, and you, know, you don't need to see eighty other films yes. to understand all these little bits that are going on. And also great to that. not see a superhero all the time. Yes, yes. Mm. and Tom Cruise is the, is the genuine movie star of our generation. Name yeah. name a bigger movie star. Of our generation. It was very okay. nice to Dino. When Dino was on the red carpet, yeah, I, you asked him a question. I chucked an existential question at him because I'd asked Nicole Kidman one uh, weeks before and she just said, I don't know, and walked off. Anyway, I threw the same question at Tom Cruise and he looked through my soul, didn't break eye contact and gave me a four-minute answer. What was he like when you spoke, spoke to him? Oh, I was, yeah, I've spoken to him twice, once a few years ago when he came out for The Mummy and then uh, more just recently for Maverick. And he's, he's lovely. Like yeah. when I, I spent about half an hour with him uh, a few years ago, and he actually, I was really surprised at how normal he felt. Yeah, you know, like just right. just in now, now. There's that's just sitting next to him in the TV studio, so there's a whole other side, and I'm sure working with him would be a different kind of thing. But he was really polite and and, and lovely, and invested and engaged, and listen the moment I and listen. I just wouldn't believe my eyes to see him. Right, because, you know, as you say, he's the, like the biggest star of our generation. I just wouldn't believe my eyes. I'm telling you, there's something to Scientology. I'm mm-hmm. telling you, yeah. really. <laughs> Something magical. How many stars are you giving the a new A billion Top Gun? stars out of five. Like, it's, as Pete said, it's so good. Sounds like so a quickly, perfect movie. Quickly tell Pete the question that you're asking. Oh, as as we get older, do you mm. think uh, we get more self-confident or are we doomed to be eternally vulnerable? <laughs> I mean, I could look at your soul or I could just look at my shoes and wait for you to go to a break. Sam and Brownie. Stephen Curry. His last appearance on the show turned into an episode of A Current Affair as he started ranting about power lines. This morning, though, he's here to talk about the St Kilda Film Festival, which kicks off today, and you can visit stkildafilmfestival.com.au for more info. Here's Stephen. I'm not going to mention the power lines because power I don't want to repeat. Just power lines in St Kilda are terrible. Hey, I mean, I'm surprised you've been invited back, to be honest. I'm, I'm just happy to see that you've got a gig, Pete. Thanks, thanks, cuz. It's nice that Sammy refuses to do um, Fridays because mm. people like Pete Hellier finally get employed. It gives finally. young up-and-comers yeah. a chance. Yeah, it's great. It's finally, great. Yeah. and I appreciate it. And You're, um, you're nervous? Or you, a little bit, you, a little bit. Yeah. I miss Jonathan Brown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Lines, right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Stephen, we've already talked about Top Gun, which opened in cinemas yesterday, and people are very excited about getting back to the movies after the yeah. hell that we've lived through in this uh, well, city. Wow, we just couldn't go to the shops very often. No, it was hell. Okay, it was hell. And that was more than that, <laughs> um, and you know it. No, you I also nearly lost your I left, mind. I left town. I, I, I'm with you, mate. I'm and now what great news, St Kilda Film Festival. How good. You can go out and see films and be with other yep, people. Yep. It's so magic. It opens tonight uh, at the uh, Palais Theatre. Uh, 3,000... Is, is it, it the Palais or the Astor? The Astor. The Astor. I think it's the Astor. The Astor, the Astor Theatre, mm. that's what I meant. Yeah, I'm, I live in the country now. They're all just the same to me. <laughs> uh, but, uh, no, it's great. It, the Astor's a great theatre. It, it, look, it, it is an, a, an incredible festival. It's one of the best festivals in Australia yeah. in, in terms of film festivals. And it gives um, you know young filmmakers... It gives filmmakers of all ages a chance to get their stuff seen where they otherwise wouldn't and um, yeah it's a great Your film's in it Hatchback Hatchback yes uh, with uh, young uh, Jackson Tozer and directed by Riley Sugars mm. who's creeping around in the studio here somewhere taking hey. Hey. Over there. Yes. And, Sugar uh, Man they call him Sugar Man I call him Lumps Lumps um, <laughs> I feel like you need a nickname uh, in this industry but look yeah, but Riley's a good example like there are heaps of directors like Riley out there who wouldn't have a chance to have their stuff uh, aired if it wasn't for um, festivals like St Kilda and um, yeah, Riley's made Fantastic. an incredible film. And um, get on to St Kilda Film Festival yep. dot com dot au mm. for tickets. Yeah, it's a yep. uh, mob movie. Well, sort of a mob movie. Yeah, look, you, I, play, uh, I play a, uh, a criminal who's uh, an expert in, in body disposal who has to take his idiot nephew out for work experience. <laughs> so, you know, I think it's a good setup. It's a good elevator <laughs> it's, pitch. It's, I like it. Do you know what I mean? But um, you're, going, you're going dark. You're playing dark roles these days, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, I get to play dark yeah. now. Why yeah. so can't you just go back to digging holes? I know. You know, I know. <laughs> now, and I've always got a moustache these days. I've got, I've got a mustache. I'm rocking a moustache as we speak. Is but, that uh, for a role or is, is that for, for fun? No, it's not for fun. My wife's done it for this time at all. My wife said, how long this one going, and this one's going for three and a half months. Oh, I like it. Away. I like a bit of facial hair. Yeah, a bit of a mo? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah I don't mind it. Yes, the, Dina. This movie, Jackson yeah. Tozer, the Jackson coaster. Jackson Tozer. Very funny is, man. Is, is incredibly the, funny man. Is he the dude that was on the footy? He did a coin toss. Mm. 
and yes. flick the coin and get is that that's him? That's the guy, that's man. Him, yeah. Really? What you it's do? hilarious. You've got to finish it off. Oh, yeah. So you <laughs> it's a great story for Brownie, but this is a radio show. I don't know it. Basically, yeah. this uh, young guy, Jackson Tozer, went and did the coin toss in the middle of the ground mm. and he flicked it in the air, but then he just kept looking for it for like 10 seconds as if it yeah. flew off. <laughs> It was <laughs> a com- comic genius. The, the, the umpire had already said, that's a tail, and the winning captain had already pointed in the direction, and both captains were running he's away while looking. he's still looking in the air. That <laughs> is a smart guy. He's a very funny... I think the, I wasn't on the, on the next night on the project, but I think the project played it genuinely thinking it was just, it was just a punter, like, as oh opposed my. to somebody who actually he's was knew what he was doing. He's, he's, he's fantastic. He's, he's a very funny man. Yeah, he's incredible. Um, but, yeah, look, it's, it's great. And just to be able to work with a whole bunch of kind of up-and-coming people in in this film has been fantastic too because i can i ta- have you got a second yeah. yes because well, yeah. i remember i was thinking this morning right about my one of the luckiest things i had in my life was bud tingwell charles bud tingwell one of the most incredible actors mm. in australian history i did a short film with him 30 years ago and i was thinking as I the was castle talking, wasn't a short film no no right? no, I know, that was, <laughs> no that was four that was four years before the castle was this short film and I, f- and I found myself doing this film with bud tingwell and i said why are you doing a short film because i couldn't quite get my head around it and he was the one who actually pointed out to me, he said, well, A, you know, that I need a leg up in this industry, you're going to need a leg up in this industry, and it's good to be able to keep doing it. Mm. And secondly, these guys are going to be the ones employing us in 20 years. So. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So, so basically the point is, if Riley doesn't take me with him, I will find him and yeah. I will stab him. So. <laughs> Riley, I might have a word after the show as well, mate. I might get a photo yeah, of yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, Pete okay. could use a leg up too, mate. So, uh, yeah, uh, yep. Go, go to the Palais. Don't go to the Palais. <laughs> go to the Astor. Go to the Astor. Beautiful. It kicks yeah. off tonight and just get out of the house and do some stuff. Uh, cars, is that me all. directly or everyone? You yeah, directly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, um, how is country life real quick? We've it's got so go. good. It's so good. Do you carry a weapon I out there? I carry a weapon. Yeah, uh, you got a bit of Ivan Milad about him. You're allowed to have, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you're allowed to carry um, two guns at all times. Wow. Um, yeah, it's brilliant. People. Do you go piggin'? I go biggin. Yeah, yeah you go biggin. Yeah, you go biggin. You go biggin. Yeah, you go biggin. Dogging and, dogging and piggin. Yeah, you go biggin. You go biggin. Oh, I go biggin. Yeah, you go biggin. Oh, hey, we're all brownie. going biggin. Let's go biggin. St Kilda Film Festival dot com dot au. See you, man. Thanks for coming in. Thanks, guys. Do you want to see what this looks like? We'll get the visuals on Instagram. Follow Chrissy, Sam, and Brownie. A woman in Portland. Uh, has been... Portland, America? Mm, yes. Mm. yes. Yes, not Portland, Victoria. No, not Portland, not Portland, Victoria. <laughs> or Portland in the UK, because if there's not a Portland in the UK, where does Portland Bill come from? Good point. Mm. <laughs> there's Portlands everywhere. But this yeah. one is in the US. Uh, Nancy Crampton Brophy um, was initially famous because uh, she's a writer. And she wrote an essay once called How to Murder Your Husband. <laughs> and now she's found herself with secondary fame mm-hmm. in a courtroom mm-hmm. being found guilty of actually murdering her husband. Oh. She wrote the essay years ago and found a bit of, uh, a bit of fame from that. It was a very good essay and she's a good writer. So was, was the essay after or before, before. the killing? Before. Isn't this Before. the whole basic? Isn't this the whole plot line of Basic Instinct? Pretty much. Am, am I am I right or wrong? Oh yeah. Yes. Is it like Sharon Stone's character? Who, she's an author who basically writes a book about killing somebody, and then she then she kills uh, somebody. I didn't, I didn't get that far. Actually, does it? I mean, look. <laughs> how many times can you pause the VHS? Brown. <laughs> You know, it gets real scratchy in that area. Yes, it it's does. Been, it's been real oh, scratchy. Many times. I'm not sure if I could describe it as scratchy. Oh, you're talking about the video tape. Oh, a jury in Portland has convicted her. She is going to jail. Um, she is a romance novelist, but now she's a uh, a felon. Wow, a felon. But now she's a uh, why? she's a nonfiction writer now. Exactly. Why would you do that? Write an essay, a book, in fact. How to murder your husband, and then go on to murder your husband, or and use expect a, to get away with it. If you are going to do it, use a nom de plume. Thanks, you guys. You must use a nom Beautiful. de plume. What's Beautiful. another? What's the other word for Thank a nom you. de plume? Uh, 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 right. No, alias. No. Alias, right? Alias, alias. There's another word that I I can't think. I have found alias. a stash of books that um that we're going to have to burn later. This is uh. This is an interesting one. How to Drink Your Own Wee Straight from the Source by Todd Carney. <laughs> wow. wow. Bubbling. 
Here's another how-to, how to say magnificent and <laughs> Frydenberg while a little bit drunk. This one's by you, Jonathan Brown. Magnificent, magnificent. Can you hear that, Pete? That's Jonathan yeah. Brown trying to say the word magnificent. Magnificent. I sound like Iceman now, or Val Kilman. They now. had, they had a pot. You do. They had a podcast party, and it got a bit loose. I was going to say, sounds like maybe grand final celebrations or something going on there. Yeah, it was a little bit loose. What about this one? Hiding from your family, the Sam Pang story. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to go. Yeah. It's got to go. What about this one? How not to treat staff? An expose by Ellen DeGeneres. <laughs> <laughs> and this one. Are you still texting bitches, yes or no? Are you still texting bitches, yes or no? Just by Black China. We're going to have to burn it in the car park. <laughs> Chrissy, Sam and Brownie. The podcast. Yes, indeed. It's Chrissy, Sam and Brownie. We've added Peter Hellier this morning. Good yes. morning, Pete. Morning, Melbourne. Morning, guys. Just we're thrilled to have you. It is the last autumn weekend that we have. Hey. And it seems a fitting one with that rain and chilly weather. We're heading into winter now, but it's okay. It's okay. We'll be okay. We'll yeah. be okay. Are there, are there any more days we've got early in the week, Swanee? Or are they passed for the season? Oh, any lovely days? Mm. I'm not 100% sure. We'll be okay. I have I have uh, invested in a waterproof and windproof jacket, though, if that gives you any idea. Great. What's on for the weekend, guys? Any plans? Well, it's Collingwood Carlton, isn't it? I'm... How are you feeling, mate? There might be 80,000 people there. Are you going? going, or do you like going. to watch it at home like me? No, um, I'm going. Uh, my best mate's... Uh... Even Siri's going. Siri, Siri, Siri's going. Come on, Siri. Siri's yeah. excited. <laughs> Siri's, uh, Siri's going with me, obviously. Um, <laughs> now, my best mate here, he's, uh, he's a Carlton man, so he's up and about at the moment. So uh, it be, it's, it's been a long time. Usually I just go with my family. Yeah. You know? um, so it's been a long time since I've gone actually definitely with a mate. Just a mate. Fabulous. We, we were both barrack for opposing teams. As a go and to soak it all in. Are you going to indulge in a full strength can of beer now that that's legal? That was a revelation. Yes, I was. That's good. I was at the Richmond game, calling with Richmond, and a uh, bloke in front of me had a can. I thought, they just smuggled that in, mate. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's, well, I mean, sure. I mean, crowd violence has gone up in the last couple of weeks, <laughs> but I mean, you can take a can out. Yeah. Well, full strength <laughs> beer. Hey, well, speaking of beers. Beer Festival at the Exhibition Centre in Carlton. Oh. You're going to this that weekend. tomorrow? I'm taking my big brother Joel and we're going to try every every single beer. Fantastic. What about oh, yeah. you, Brownie? What have you got win. on? Uh, I've got the football. Christine Swan, we're commentating the football, so looking forward to that. Uh, I can't even remember what game I'm doing. Uh, actually, I'm doing the Blockbuster. <laughs> Port Adelaide Essendon on Sunday night. Stay tuned. Is that a Blockbuster? Absolutely. Who's not watching that? <clears throat> big one. It's a big one. <laughs> This is the Chrissy Salmon Brownie Podcast. Question without notice, guys. Um, Favourite shampoo? Discuss. <laughs> I'm a Palmolive man. We're just a couple of blokes sitting around, <laughs> Chrissy, <laughs> just chatting about shampoos. That's what we do. Favourite shampoos. You do have favourites. Um, and weirdly, this has come up this week for me. Because in one of those sort of end-of-the-line discount stores, I found a bottle of Flex. Now, Flex in the 80s and 90s was the shiz. Yes. You could smell it in someone's hair when they walked past you. In a good way or like a... In a a good way. Mm. It sort of smells like musk sticks. Oh. And I think it's come from some unusual country, boxes of it, and I have purchased some. It's turned my hair into straw, but... (laughs) It smells great. <laughs> smells musky. Mm. I have become obsessed with a shampoo, um, and not necessarily because I, I think it's a good shampoo, mm. but the reason I love this shampoo is its name. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and its name is Kevin Murphy. <laughs> and I, I just love, and I don't know anything about <laughs> Kevin Murphy himself. So All I know is he's an Aussie. What? I know that much. And I love the idea that a bloke, an Aussie, called Kevin Murphy, <laughs> decided to get into the shampoo game. That is Who's so not buying that? And they would have said to him, they said, Kevin, okay, you, you love your shampoo, but you got to come up with a name. And he went, nah, I'm sticking with Kevin Murphy. <laughs> <laughs> that is so true. I've never thought about it. I know about Kevin Murphy and always have. A lot of hotels use Kevin Murphy products. Yes. Channel 10, love a bit of Kevin Murphy. But... The, pr- the the packaging is high end. Absolutely. Fancy, beautiful colours, beautiful like gem shaped bottles with the big words in Kevin black Murphy. Kevin Murphy. Is this targeting males? 
Well, not no. judging on the, the 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 way it's presented, not Absolutely necessarily. Absolutely not. But, no, no. But, but based on the fact that he's called, he's just stuck with Kevin Murphy. Yeah, I maybe like that. he has. I like to think that Kevin Murphy. I, mm. I, like to, I don't know anything about him. I like to think that he comes from a family of like pig farmers. Yes, you know, and so. he, he was supposed to follow in the tradition. You know, and he's had to say to his dad, "It's like a Billy Elliot movie." You know, yes. Dad, I want to make shampoo. And he goes, "No." you got to be a pig farmer. Your grandfather was a pig farmer. His grandfather before that was a pig farmer. Yes. No yes. making shampoo. No son of mine. <laughs> He's making shampoo. You're a Murphy. Kevin Murphy Sr. was a pig farmer. Kevin Murphy Sr. Sr. was a pig farmer. You're making. You're a pig farmer. And he got kicked out of the house. And then days later, <laughs> Kevin Murphy Sr. went out to feed the pigs. And all of a sudden, little Kevin Murphy was there. <laughs> Putting a body lotion onto a pig. <laughs> what are you doing? And then he smelt Kevin Murphy, Murphy Senior. He smells the lotion. He goes, "What's what's that? That's the lotion I've been working on, Dad. It's a, it's a shampoo." Yes. Well, Special son, things. you're a shampoo artist. Yes. Go and chase your dream, son. Yes, the oh, new dynasty of Kevin Murphy. So I don't need to know anything more about Kevin Murphy. I have my story <laughs> locked and loaded. Whenever I'm conditioning with Kevin Murphy, yeah. that's what I'm thinking about. Yeah. Ever wondered what happens in the studio? Check out Chrissy, Sam and Brownie on Instagram. This morning we are rich with tidbits. We've got a lot of in-house. Who wants to go first? I'm looking at you, John. Riley Otter. <laughs> What was that? That's all I've got. It's an outburst. Uh, Ray Liotta uh, passed away. Is that? Is that? He's only in his 60s. Yeah. 67 years young. Mm. He was filming over there, so he died in his sleep, which is a great shame. Of course, famous for Goodfellas, amongst many other movies. Uh, may I offer you a tidbit? You may. Ray Liotta was actually adopted. So he was an, or- he was an orphan. He was adopted at the age of six months. Obviously, he was famous for his role in Goodfellas. He's not actually Italian. Interesting. He's Scottish. So fantastic. Yeah, he was adopted by an Italian, Italian family, which really, Ray Liotta has answered the question, nature or nurture, mm. because the fact that he is so mm. Italian mm. Yeah. is because he's been raised in that, you know, situation. That's yeah. right. I thought your brain was trying to get him cancelled Hey, cancelled. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm going to go with another one. This would get you cancelled. This is the modern age. Okay. Another rally on a tidbit. Yeah. May I offer you a tidbit? You may. Um, Frank Sinatra's daughters wanted him desperately, wanted Ray Liotta to desperately play their dad oh. in a uh, TV series. Well, he had and those blue eyes. That's yeah. right. Uh, he knocked it back. So the girls sent him a real life's horse head in the mail. Oh, that's so nice. That's funny. That's a funny joke. <laughs> <laughs> That's quite literally horseplay. That is That's quite nice. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Very nice. Pete. May, oh, oh Swanee. That's Swanee, you go. Here we May go. I offer you a tidbit? It's a specifically for unsociable people, of which we are all, yes. really. Simply pop your coat on before every time you answer your front door. If it's someone you don't want to see, you can say you're on your way out. In the unlikely event that it's someone you do want to see... You can simply say you've just arrived home. That's smart. Very smart. That's smart. And more yeah. of a tip rather than a tidbit, if I'm going to be a dick about it, but I'm um, still very good. <laughs> I, was really, I was really <laughs> hoping that none of you would be a dick about it, but thank you, Dino. May, uh, may I offer you a tidbit? You may. Ford, uh, Ford uh, Motor Company, uh, once put out a car, uh, you may even remember this, it was, I think it was a Ford Fairlane, one of those cars, and the air conditioning, you may remember, had uh, f- uh, four uh, things, one, two, three, and four, and uh, it got complaints when it first rolled out because number four was too noisy. Everyone was saying, this is too noisy. Number four is too noisy. So they had to do something about it, and it's going to cost them a fortune to kind of fix the air conditioning. So what they do, they, they record the cars, and all they did was change number four to boost and all of a sudden, <laughs> the complaint stopped because if you're going to boost your air conditioning, you want it to be noisy. Absolutely. Genius. What a genius little bit of marketing. That is genius. Wow. Boost. That's fantastic. The I the love that. The human brain works amazing. May I, I offer that. you a tidbit? You may. Elon Musk in 2018 to launch his Tesla Speedster, the Roadster, the flash-looking yeah. convertible mm-hmm. one. Mm-hmm. He put one in space with a dummy in it uh, and played, with, and out of the stereo, rather, in the car console. Starman is playing Bowie. This is four years ago. No one cleaned it up. For the last four years, a red convertible has been orbiting the Earth playing this song on repeat. You're joking. No, it's just space junk for the last 
four years. How did he get it up there? Right now, in space, there's a car with a dummy in it with this blaring out of the speakers. Pretty cool, huh? That is that's really that's cool. But cool. how did they keep it going? Surely there's battery... Oh. No, like they just put it in the orbit like all space junk. It just sits up the there mu- eternally. How does the music keep playing? Some kind of Elon Musk magic. <laughs> Has anyone got photos of this? I really love this story, Dino. Absolutely, mate. Go on the World Wide Web. It was also in uh, the final scenes of Fast and Furious. <laughs> <laughs> the Car latest in one. Space. Is the air conditioning on boost? It is on boost. <laughs> yeah. uh, Jennifer is the dummy wearing a jacket. Yes. Jennifer from Croydon. Jennifer. Good morning. Hi. May I offer you a tidbit? You may. Lost in the jungle sometimes injure themselves or fall to the bottom of the jungle because they grab their other arm thinking it's a branch. Those silly and sloths. Those silly sloths. <laughs> I only found out this week, funnily enough, that sloths are spend their entire lives upside down. I didn't know that. What? I didn't know that. The whole their yeah, whole life hanging. Thing. Yeah, but, they hang the babies out to dry. Wow. <laughs> Both physically and metaphorically. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's so, I love sloths. That's amazing. I'm mad mm. for them. You get a two hundred dollar grill voucher, Jennifer. Ducks from Wanturna South. Hello there, Ducks. Hello. May I offer you a tidbit, please? You may, please, and thank you. Istanbul, a city in Turkey, is the only city in the world that is split over two continents. Fantastic. Well Istanbul is split over two continents. Do you know what ones they are? Um, I think it's like Europe and Asia. Europe and Asia, yeah. Wouldn't be <sighs> Australia. That is a problem, would they? Yeah, That's Europe and Asia. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What That's can a, we give to Dutch? She's clever. Brilliant 12 year old. A double pass to Minions. Rise of Gru. Minions, Rise of Gru, only in cinemas June 23. And Dark, she can go to the Melbourne Zoo. A whole family pass. Thanks for that tidbit. Thank you a lot. L- I like Dark. I do too, very much. Carl from Jembrook. Carl. Good morning. May I offer you a tidbit? You may, Carl. Certainly. And also, love your show as well. But my tidbit is, do you know why sperm whale is called a sperm whale? Oh. Oh, Give it clean. I did know why. And now I can't remember. I found out last week because I thought, what a rude name. Mm. It is. But the actual thing is, uh, a sperm whale used to be hunted in the 1800s uh, for the blubber. But its main uh, attraction for whalers was the oil that's contained in its head. Now, there's up to five tonnes of oil in a sperm whale's head. And when it's actually harvested, when they cut the head off, which is pretty gruesome, Mm. it comes out as clear as vodka. It is clear liquid until the air gets to it. Then it starts going clarify into what looks like semen. Hence the name sperm whale, and it's actually called spermaceti, and it's the most valuable oil to be farmed from a whale, hence the name, a sperm whale. Oh, oh, weirdly, oh. that wasn't the answer I got God. on Google. No. 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 no Dino's, Dino's finger was hovering over the dump button. <laughs> 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 that is very interesting. And also, what is your accent? English. I'm from England, Which Northampton, England. Northampton. It's a gorgeous accent, Carl. Thank you for calling and thrilling us all. Carl, can I ask you a personal question? Do you eat chicken? Uh, I do eat chicken, yes. A $200 Garmy Chicken and Beer voucher. Try Garmy Chicken and Beer's newest and tastiest dish yet, the Galbi Chicken Psalm. That is a very tasty place to eat fried That's chicken, right. let oh, me boy. tell you. Oh, mama. Jaden, please don't stuff this up. We've had a great run of tidbits this morning. Yeah, the sperm whale, that is interesting. May I, may I offer you a tidbit? Yes, Jaden. Uh, Winnie the Pooh's real name is actually Edward. What? <laughs> How do you know? I thought it was Kevin Murphy. <laughs> so, before Christopher, Christopher Robin uh, like found him or became friends with him, his name was Edward, and then Christopher Robin changed it to Winnie the Pooh. Is it Edward the Pooh? Or Edward Pooh? <laughs> Good Pooh. Uh, I don't know what his last name was. Jaden, have you seen the Winnie the Pooh movie the with um, Ewan McGregor, but one of Pete Hellier's friends, Ewan McGregor? Uh, is that one of the original ones from, like, Disney? Like, you one, one, must one, one. see it. It is so beautiful. I think it's called Christopher Robin. It is so gorgeous. Have mm. you guys seen no. it? No, I haven't seen it, no. Oh, God, it's divine. Is it Paddington too good? It's a, it's it's better. It's oh, better than Paddington whoa, whoa, too. Whoa, 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 There's no whoa. hijinks. It's all very beautiful and, mm. oh, God, it's gorgeous. You must see it, Jaden. Yeah. You'll love it.
Jaden, chicken will. or burgers? What are you feeling, friend? Burgers, please. Two hundred dollar grilled voucher, old boy. Congratulations. That was a great round of tidbits, everyone. It was well really done. great. Back in a sec. Chrissy, Sam and Brownie. Pete Hellier, thank you for uh sitting in Pangy's chair. No worries at all. He's sitting that. in a big chair on Sunday. Oh, hey, Carlton Collingwood. Oi! Carlton Collingwood Sunday, Pete. You're going along, mate. That'll be my I am, mate. Are you on a Jack Ginevan bandwagon? Ginevan? Jack Ginevan bandwagon. I love again, again. him. He's, well, I'm not sure is he playing. Oh, is he playing because he had a little bit of a calf injury during the Ooh. week. Oh, Waves Brown. But I've got a uh, may I offer you a tip here. Whoa. I know we did it earlier in the show. The win-loss record of these two great teams yep. since the late 1800s, mm. Carlton v Collingwood, 128 wins apiece mm. and four draws. Whoa. Wow. Carlton, in my life. That, it's, it's actually tied. The whole series is tied. After 120 odd years we, of meetings, and Cardinal in my lifetime have always been just ahead of us, and we we got the level a couple of years ago, and then we got up by one, and then the Blues I think won the last game. They did too, so they've even things up. I always wanted to see us get ahead of, on the ledger because they're, the, they're the only team I believe that Collingwood would have a, a an inferior win loss uh, ratio. Mm. Is the uh, is it the mo- is it the, s- the sort after game Sunday afternoon the yeah. MCG? We haven't. I feel like we haven't spoken about Carlton Collingwood for a long time. We've spoken about Richmond Carlton, maybe Richmond Collingwood played in the prelim final, but I don't feel like this town's been usurped by what's what's probably the biggest rivalry mm. in our game. For yeah. a long time. It's been a long time since we've gone to a Collingwood Carlton game feeling like it meant means something. It's a long time since anyone's given a rat's about Carlton. Yeah, well, they haven't been it's good. That's the, great, that's the great thing about football is that everyone eventually gets their time in the sun and usually it's a surprise for the team. Apart from Gold Coast, am I right? No, that's, that's yes. unfair. Eventually that's unfair. they will. Don't you worry. You, you're, you're, are you conflicted this weekend? As well, you know, it's funny. I'm caught up in it. I'm involved in it. because Not involved in it, but uh, my daughter... Yeah. My eldest daughter, uh-huh. Olivia, mm. mad Carlton. Yeah. And now we've been Can watching you believe that? Games. Can you believe that, by the no, way? A, a Lions legend. Thanks, Christo. Well, ha- has a child who doesn't <laughs> care about the Lions. <laughs> well, Nick Dacos, I don't think he did not care about Collingwood, but he was a, he was a Carlton supporter for really? a Really? Yeah. What? Yeah. Yeah. And now he plays for Collingwood, of course. So, But my mate Vossie's there coaching as well. But also, my mate Craig McRae. Is uh, coaching Collingwood, so I feel like I'm invested. They're almost like my uh, favourite second teams now. Who's the better coach? Uh, oh, Pete, torn between two lovers, yeah. feeling like a fool. <laughs> You've got to say, Vossy, fly. Well, I've only been coached by Vossy, yeah. so I, I can't say fly. Although fly, uh, on all our um, Mad Mondays and footy trips, he was the organizer, and he used to wear a hat. And it said minibus on the front. And we say, why are you wearing a uh, hat with minibus on the front for? And he said, because I'm only half a coach. You like that? You know, like, uh, that's a good gag. It's not bad. It's a good gag. It's a good gag. He was the coach of the trip. <laughs> so anyway, that, that'll be a good game on Sunday. But How many? Go. How many of the G? How many of the 80,000? Mm. I'm glad you've asked me that question, Dana. Now, um, I haven't been asked for Collingwood Carlton tickets for a long time. Mm-hmm. Because I played 200 games, Pete. I can get two tickets to any game for the rest of my life. Oh. However, a mate the other day put in a ticket request and said, if it's okay, big fella, can you just grab me 11 seats, <laughs> preferably <laughs> under cover, to take your family to? Would you say, Sam Pang, please do not call this number again? <laughs> hey, best on ground, if you want to be in the audience yes. for that. Well, I can get you 11 tickets for that, Swanee. Easily. Yes. There you go. Best and you've on been ground. in the audience, Swanee, for Best on Ground. I have Saturday indeed. night. We're having, and guess what I do this It's week. a live variety sports show. Yes. It is fun as anything. Easy to get to. Easy parking, which is very important for anxious people like me. They juice you up in the audience, I'm Free told. Three tickets. Ben Lomas on uh, on best. crowd warm-up. Go just to see Ben. Yeah, I mean, Ben's he is funny. a miracle. He's the best. You know, Benny Lomas was late last week, and they got me in to warm the crowd up, and I told <laughs> Oh, no. And I told him. <laughs> I told a Larry Emder joke, which backfired. Have you heard the one about Larry Emder dying? No. And I said, uh, you know, here Larry Emder just died, and there was three or four older ladies in the front row. <laughs> and, and obviously the joke is, I say, you, know, you know how old he was? And someone says, 47. I go, higher. <laughs> you know, yeah, that's the joke. And I go, lower. You know, like Price is right. Well, the girls didn't get the joke. They were mortified, and then I had to say, oh, no, 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 he hasn't died. He's still... <laughs> so funny. So I got sacked. But anyway, come along, give us a call. The nuggets of gold like that, 13, oh, yeah. 24, 10, keep your Saturday night free. No, no, uh, good, and go see Brownie and the gang at Best on Ground.
Ripper Show. We'll be back tomorrow. Chrissy, Sam, and Brownie. Oh, unless it's a weekend. Channel 100.